We're going to continue our discussion of probability distributions by talking about conditional probability distributions. In data science, we often ask questions of the form if-then. So, for example, if I do action X, what will the world of tomorrow look like? If I write email that talks about a great deal, does that mean that it will get flagged as spam? If I buy this stock, will I make more money on my portfolio? These are the kinds of questions that we hope to be able to answer with data science, but we need to be able to form these questions mathematically, and the way that we're going to do that is through the language of conditional probabilities. What we'll also need to do is to be able to combine distributions, and so this will require us to combine multiple conditional probability distributions together, or to flip the direction of the conditionality. So let's first begin with the definition of conditional probability. The conditional probability is where we're taking some joint probability space and we're going to restrict it to the cases where we know that a particular outcome has occurred. Mathematically, this is equivalent to taking two events A and B and then dividing it by the probability of B. Let's look at this using the notation. When we say the probability of A given B, we will use this vertical line to denote that we are conditioning on B. So this is often read as the probability of A given B. To compute this, we first take the intersection of A and B. Recall that this is when both A and B occur. And then we divide by the probability of B happening. So let's take a look at our event space again. We're going to denote in the big rectangle all of the possible event space. And then we have two events A and B. If we take the intersections of events A and B, that gives us the space defined by both A and B. If we then remove everywhere where B doesn't happen, we're left with the following event space. We've restricted ourselves to the space where B has definitely happened, and given that we know that, what is the probability that A happens? So before we talked about independent probabilities, let's see how that relates to conditional probabilities. Recall that independent probabilities are probabilities where you can write the joint distribution as a product of marginals. If you have two independent probability distributions and you condition on one of those distributions, that tells you no information. Okay, now let's take a look at a concrete example of conditional probabilities, and let's return to the example of rolling two dice. Specifically, what we'll ask is, what is the probability that the sum of two dice will be six, given that the first die was greater than three? So let's call our two variables A and B. A is the first die, B is the second die. So we can write this as a six by six grid, and each point in the grid is equally probable. In this case, they each have probability one over 36. I've highlighted in yellow the event that the first die is greater than 3. That means that it was either 4, 5, or 6. And now, from that, we can look at what are the outcomes where you have 6 as the total. Now, there are five different ways for this to happen, but only two of them land inside the yellow region. So now, let's work through this rigorously. All right, so first, let's take a look at the individual probabilities that we need to compute. We need to compute the probability of A being greater than 3 intersected with the probability that A plus B is equal to 6. There are only two ways that that could happen. 2 out of 36. We also need to ask what is the probability of A being greater than 3. That is equal to 1 half since there are three outcomes out of six. And then we use the law of conditional probability to put them together, dividing one by the other. And so that gives us one-ninth. Sometimes you need to turn a conditional distribution into a joint distribution. For that, we'll use the chain rule. And sometimes you need to flip the order of the conditionality. For that, we'll use Bayes' rule. The definition of conditional probability lets us derive what's called the chain rule. The chain rule is what allows us to turn conditional probabilities into joint probabilities. So first, let's write a joint probability as a joint probability multiplied by 1. 
and we'll write 1 as p over y over p over y. So you'll notice that p of xy over p of x is just the definition of the probability of p of x given y. And so now we can take a conditional probability of p of x given y, multiply that by the probability of y, and we get back the joint distribution. And in general, you can do this for any joint distribution. In general, you multiply the complete conditional distribution, probability one variable conditioned on all the others, you multiply all of those together to get the complete joint. Finally, let's talk about Bayes' rule. Bayes' rule is maybe something that you've heard of. This allows you to flip the order of a conditionality. And so, this is a relatively simple expression, but it is so important that it has its own name. You may want to even memorize this formula. Okay, so let's walk through what's happening here. First, recall that a conditional probability distribution is restricted to just the space where b has happened. But that isn't the whole story. It excludes a large part of the event space. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the chain rule to turn this into a joint distribution. And so, by applying the chain rule, we turn this into the joint distribution of the probability of a comma b. But, this is now the joint distribution, but we actually want the conditional distribution of probability of b given a. So, to do that, you take the joint distribution, probability of a comma b, and divide that by the probability of a. And so once you do that, we have back the probability of b given a. That is our very brief introduction to manipulating conditional probability distributions. Next, I'm going to talk about a very simple application of conditional probability distributions, something called a language model.